Here we see that the Catholic Church teaches that the obligation to rest on the Sabbath has been replaced with the obligation to rest on Sunday. The Catechism states that the formula regarding the Fourth Commandment is remember to keep holy the Lord's Day. This particular Roman Catholic belief can be traced directly to a decree issued in 321 AD by the Roman Emperor Constantine when he commanded that all judges and city people and craftsmen shall rest on the venerable day of the sun. In 363, the Synod of Laodicea made it official. It decrees that Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but must work on that day, rather honoring the Lord's day, and if they can, resting as Christians. But if any shall be found to be Judaizers, let them be anathema from Christ. By the year 381, almost 70 years since Constantine's soldiers had placed the sign of the cross on their shields, paganism was still being practiced side by side with Christianity, making it hard to tell the difference between the two. According to Edward Gibbon, in his historical account of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, paganism was still the constitutional religion of the Senate. The hall or temple in which they assembled was adorned by the statue and altar of victory, a majestic female standing on a globe with flowing garments, expanded wings, and a crown of laurel in her outstretched hand. The senators were sworn on the altar of the goddess to observe the laws of the emperor and of the empire, and a solemn offering of wine and incense was the ordinary prelude of their public deliberations. The emperor yet spared the statues of the gods which were exposed to the public veneration. Four hundred and twenty-four temples or chapels still remained, to satisfy the devotion of the people, and in every quarter of Rome, the delicacy of the Christians was offended by the fumes of idolatrous sacrifice. We know from history that Theodosius, the Christian emperor, decided to do something about it. According to Gibbon, in a full meeting of the Senate, the emperor proposed, according to the forms of the Republic, the important question of whether the worship of Jupiter or that of Christ should be the religion of the Romans. Under pressure from Theodosius, Jupiter was condemned and the members of the Senate suddenly became Christians. Christianity became the state religion of the Roman Empire, thereby firmly establishing the authority of the Roman Catholic Church. Laws of the Christian Roman Empire that was established by Theodosius are recorded in a document known as the Theodosian Code. That code states that on the Lord's Day, which is the first day of the week, on Christmas, and the days of Epiphany, Easter, and Pentecost, believers are to be occupied with the worship of God. Those who follow this law, we command, shall be comprised under the name of Catholic Christians. But others indeed we require as insane and raving to bear the infamy of heretical teaching. Their gathering shall not receive the name of churches, they are to be smitten first with the divine judgment, and after that by the vengeance of our indignation. Before we move on, I'd like to make one thing very clear. It was not the Catholic Church that taught me to disregard the Fourth Commandment. It was the Protestant Church. Scores of books have been written documenting the Catholic Church's involvement with substituting Sunday in place of the Seventh-day Sabbath. They don't deny it. They say that the church has the authority to make that change, and they're proud of it. Catholic theologians are honest about it. It's the Protestant theologians who are in denial. The majority of the Protestant reformers did nothing to address the substitution of Sunday in place of the Sabbath, and Protestant theologians are ashamed to admit it. Most will do almost anything to avoid an honest and in-depth discussion about rest on the seventh day. Most attempt to change the subject to Sunday worship as fast as they can. Time is the Ally of Deceit, the book and five one-hour DVDs, now available from Partakers Publications. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ.